So welcome back to the RSS Club. Today, Edia Nani is going to present about getting started with a API in R using the HTTR package and other related packages. Cool. Thank you. Go ahead. Uh, hi, everyone. So yeah, today I will be presenting the getting getting started with API in R. So I'm sure that like many of you it's like have used api without even noticing it so how many of you have used like uber or facebook or all the application you're using today how many of you have used like this application can you put in the chat like yes or no i can see actually the ah yeah now i see the chat good Good, great. Yes, okay, of course. But how many of you know that, you know, behind the application, there is an API? And the meaning of the API and how to use it, actually, how to access, you know, it's like make a request uh, in R. Okay. Okay, good. Great. I want to see lots of notes, so it's like we can learn something new today. Okay, so even, you know, it's like to access GitHub, there is an API, you know, it's like, so you don't need to go to the web browser, Uber, like, uh, yeah. So here I will present some like of uh, genomics API. So now let's uh, understand, you know, it's like what's an API and we will go like a step by step to understand that. So API stands for application programming interface. What does it mean? So let's say you go like to a restaurant, you know, and you have a waiter, he comes and you make like an order, you order like a meal. So you make a request, okay? to the kitchen, the kitchen will prepare your meal and the waiter will come here like with a meal. So what you did is like making a request through the waiter to the kitchen and got a response and you know, you got your meal. That's, you know, it's like what the application and you know, do. So what, when you, it's like you use an application, you will send a request. So the waiter, which acts like an API, will take your request and send it to the chef here, which acts like a server or a database. So when like the chef prepares your meal, so you will get like the waiter will come with your meal. So you'll get a response. And you know, it's like, uh, so the most important thing, like go, going like through making a request, getting a response. So it's through an API. Is there any question about that? Okay, so as we said, you make a request, you get a response and the waiter here is acting as an API. So you will get the, uh, in the backend, yeah, an API is doing all this work without, you know, it's like you don't notice all this work, but it's thanks to an API. Okay, so here like a small example about uh, like 23andMe API. So let's say like you're interested uh, in like a patient ID or in a genotype or, you know, whatever you can go uh, to the uh, 23andMe API and make a request. You can see there, there is a very good documentation of what you want, like, or you can request. And then, so through the API, the 23 API, you will get a response of the genotype you're interested in, the IDs, the, you know, all the information you're interested in. And then, you know, it's like, even when you have like, let's say a genomic app, so you will be using this API, you know, it's like to make a request and get the response. Okay, so now we know it's like the, have a big idea about like an API, but how to make a request in R. 
So we'll, we will be using like two main libraries, HTTR and JSON Lite, okay? To start all, you know, it's like making re the request. The first thing we need is an URL, okay? So we need to prepare our URL and then uh, after preparing the URL, we will make a request. So everyone knows what is an URL. So we have, for example, we will be using the Ensemble API. If you go to the Ensemble REST API, you click here, you will go to this like REST Ensemble REST API. So the URL of uh, the REST Ensemble API is this. It's like fixed, you know, it's, it's base URL. It's a REST Ensemble.org. And then, so here, this is the base URL. And then, so we have what we call an API endpoint. So an API endpoint, specify where the APIs can access the resources, use, uh, the resources you're requesting. Here, if you go to the uh, Ensemble REST API, you can get the different like endpoints. Okay, let's say you're interested like uh, in, well, using a given identifier and return its latest version. The good thing about the Ensemble REST API is if you click here, it's very intuitive. It's very well done. So you can like get an example of the different requests in like different, you know, programming languages. And here an example of the output. We'll see. So here like it's a JSON, you know, it's like a format, but we will see how it's a JSON format. And you can get like how to, yeah, it's like request using Python, make a request using R, here like a small example. But let's start here, it's like making, you know. Uh, so uh, let's make our uh, first request. As I said, the first thing we need, we will be needing is a, a URL. So we will have here, when preparing for the URL, a base URL, and then we add like the part that is like a uh, very, you know, it's like, and where we can access the resources we're interested in, which called endpoint. So to like prepare our URL, we can use like a function modify URL where we can put the base URL and then add it, you know, it's like the endpoint. The, you will get a, a URL like this one. So let's check, you can copy here. I will put in the chat. you can copy this URL and access it to see the result like you will get. Okay. So if you click here, you will see that you're getting a faster a sequence of a, like a gene, okay? What we, let's go again to here. So let's explain what we are doing. So in the endpoint, we are going to the sequence, the ID, and this part change. You know, it's like uh, you can like uh, specify the genes, whatever gene you're interested in, and then you know it's like to get the sequence. When so what we want to get like through this API is getting the sequence of this gene. I will switch now to the uh, R Studio. Okay, let's go to the R Studio. Can you see my screen? Yes. Okay. So let's start. 
first we load the library, then we prepare the URL. You have all the documentation in the Quarto and in the doc and in the this R markdown. So here we have the R markdown. We have, I made like a Word document also. So uh, what we are getting here is the URL. If we can see, you'll get the whole URL. Okay. Next step, what we have to do is making our request. Okay. So how to make our request? APIs use HTTP ver verbs for a data request. We have one of the most common ones is get request. So what you will be saying, please get me this gene, this one, you know, using the API and give me a response. So what we will, when making, yeah, so we will ask, please get, and here, oh, I have the Spanish keyboard, sorry. I will switch, yeah. So, and you will ask, get this URL to get what we call a response. Okay. I will do this to see the... Okay. So please run this and let me know what you will get. Did you get these results? So here, the response will be, okay. We have like, uh, so the API response will give us an information about our query, the date, the response status, and then the content type and the size. So this content type is really important because through this, we will have like an idea about like the, the type, you know, it's like of uh, the response, the content type of the API response. Okay, good. So now that we have like this response and we have, we will, uh, yeah, understand more about this information, the status 200. So uh, let's check more like the status of our request because uh, whenever there is like an error or whatever, we want, you know, it's like we will get an error message. So we are really interested to see that everything went okay, that our, you know, it's like request uh, went okay and we got the response. Okay, so to like check the uh, response, we do like HTTP status and we'll see it's like the response. Please let me know it's like if there's a, like a question here or whatever. So once we will get like uh, the HTTP status, you will see, please run this, that we will get like a, this kind of like response. Success 200, okay. This is amazing <laughs> because many times, let's say, for example, we make a mistake and uh, like uh, we remove this, okay? So we run all this again. Okay. So whenever there's like an error, you will get like client error 400 bad request. This is an example, so it's like when, whenever, also it's like uh, you have uh, 400, well, you have really to see what, what didn't go like well and what was the problem. So many times yeah, it's like it gives you a message 
And here you can have an idea reading this message, what, yeah, what's the problem, okay? Another way of also, it's like checking the, the status code because these are called the status code. It's like the 200, the 400. So you will have like different status code that you have to understand. So when it's like 200, it means that the action like uh, went well in it's uh, uh, successfully in its, uh, the action was successfully received and you've got like your response and everything went well. If you have like uh, 400, 404, 400, so it means like there is a bad uh, request and you have like uh, an error and like uh, there is a problem there. So it's like you have really to check the, the error, okay? There are also other ways, you know, it's like to check if there is an error because uh, yeah, realizing, you know, it's like whenever you get an error, so you won't get a response. So really you have to check yeah, what didn't go away. Okay, so the other, let's go again to like our example here, but yeah, giving like the good G name and running. So uh, let's check the other, like uh, whenever like you want to have an idea about the status code, you run like status code response and you will get 200. So everything went well. Now, one of the uh, functions that is used, so it's like uh, to return to the format of the content is HTTP type. Here you have the type, you can content type. So what like uh, HTTP type, the HTTP type do is giving you this information. So when you go, you get like HTTP type, you will get application JSON. Okay. Now, sometimes, so when you're doing like a, a fun, when you're developing a function, you're interested that whenever like there is a, a bad, uh, like an error or whenever you get uh, a status code or 400, uh, so uh, it stop. So that's why it's interesting to have this whenever like you're developing a function. What you're saying that please, whenever like the status code is 400 or 404, which means like there is a client error, so please stop or give me a message, something went wrong, okay? But this is whenever like you're developing a function with APIs. Okay, so now we have our response. We got the response, we got, uh, we, uh, so now how to track errors. Now the, like the step is to get that API response. Okay, we know that everything went well, but what's the response? What are the sequence here? So for that, uh, there is in the HTTP, HTTR like package, a very useful function, which uh, is called content. So it extracts, you know, the content of the response. We said that uh, the type of the response is application JSON. JSON, is like a dictionary in Python. So it's like key value. The good thing about JSON, it's like it gives you, it's, you can put there a structured data. So it's very useful, but in R, you know, we don't want to handle you this kind of uh, uh, like uh, data structure. What we do is, uh, and here the content uh, function, what does it do? Is like it will parse auto automatically the JSON format, okay? And we will see now this. Okay, so here, we will see that this will parse and we will get our sequence. 
Okay. So please check the class of this object and let me know, you know the class of this object, of this API result object. Can someone tell me the class of this object? Okay, so did you get a list? Okay, so, oh, you get the response. Actually, you have to put content response because what you've got here, the object here of response is response. But once you put content response, you will get a list. Good list. Yeah. So the question here, okay. We said that we've got the response in JSON format, okay? How are we getting a list here? It should be JSON actually. So any guess? Let me know in the chat why we are getting a list when we are expecting like a JSON format. JSON is not a R type, right? List is a R type. So yeah, that's good. I said, and I put it, yeah. So what does like content do is parsing this JSON. So R can't really read JSON because it's a dictionary. So it's quite weird. So what, JSON, what content do is making like a, a JSON format a list. So you will get, if you have a look at this, you will get like nested list. You will get sequence, you will get other information, but in a list format. Then it will be, you know, it's like uh, easier, like to make it a data frame or any other format supported by R. But for example, when you, you're um, using Python, it's easier because whenever you have JSON format, it's easy to make it a dictionary and you know it's like work with it in Python, but in R it's quite different, okay? Okay, so to make this like a JSON format and converting it to a data frame, there is a very useful function, which is uh, from like, um, from Giza. Okay, so let's try when we, you do from JSON and you put your API result here. It's this, this function. So this function, it converts the like JSON format to a data frame. But it's a, there is a trick here, so. Okay. So whenever, oh, we have actually to load the library JSON Lite. Then, okay. So whenever you use like this from JSON with a, to like convert, you know, from list to a data frame, you will get this kind of error. Why? So we said that the content function so it parses automatically uh, like the uh, JSON, okay, to get a list. And then what we wanted is converting the list into a data frame. But whenever here we want to convert it using a 
from JSON function, we will get this error. And actually reading this error, you will realize what is missing here. So it says argument text takes the must be a JSON string. So here, what from JSON accept is a JSON string. So what we have to do here is adding like as a text to make it a JSON str string. So the from JSON can like, uh, and this, oh, one moment. Uh, okay, so here must be JSON URL or file, okay. So uh, from JSON needs an argument, we said a JSON string, okay. So if you go to the from JSON function, you will see that here you have to provide like as a text, so making it a JSON string, and then you have to provide an encoding. Hmm. Okay. Actually, let's see this. Why it's not taking it? Okay, I'm getting an error because yeah, actually this format has to be a faster format. It can take it like as a text. So uh, we have to uh, change the format here and make it instead of text like a hey, fast. Are you yeah. seeing the comments on the chat? Oh, sorry, no. Oh, yeah. So Aaron is saying that JSON text, yeah, that's true. Yeah. So whenever, yeah, you take it, but that's okay. So here, what we are making is JSON text. So making the response from a list as a text. And then we can use it the JSON text here, like from JSON. And we remove all this. Okay. Sorry. I lost this. Okay, yeah, that's true. I made yeah, a mistake here. Okay, so uh, so here we can, after that, use like a map or perfection or like a list, you know, to get like all these in a very nice, like, or even you can, like make it a uh, cheaper. But sometimes here, you know, it's like for, uh, for the like faster, for the sequence, it's better to have it in a faster format. So it's like here in the text day, adding like text day and faster. I think I will have uh, this, yeah, in, uh, in an example, but otherwise, it's quite easy here when adding as, and then you can use like FASTA or if there is like an image use PNG, or if there is a, a we will see an example of XML or whatever format you're interested in. So you can like uh, from a list or from JSON, actually the JSON is a default format, but from JSON we can make it like, sorry, a text. And then from the text, it's very easy to make it like a data frame. Okay, so let's move on now. 
we are, let's say, we want to uh, have all the microarrays from like uh, uh, Homo sapiens, for example. Okay, so we want to get like a, a table with all the microarrays from Homo sapiens species we're interested in. Then we can see like uh, we can change, you know, like the species. And then we uh, so are making this uh, request, please. So get me all the all the microarrays from Homo sapiens that are in the ensemble database through the API. So we are making a get like request here. And what we do, uh, instead of modify URL, we can use paste. And I want like uh, the content type to be uh, an application JSON. Why? Because then, as I said, uh, uh, we have like a content function to parse this uh, like uh, format, and then we can easily get a data frame. So we run this. Oh, we run all this. Okay, we will get here the R. So we parse this response. We will get all this and let's check the class of this like uh, content R. And as I said, we will get a list. Good. So we have a list, as we said. I said before that having like a content that, yeah, the content is, uh, it automatically parse like the response. So I wanted to check it by making like identical content. So with parse it and here, So the question is, it's like, are these two outputs identical? To be sure, you know, it's like that the content function, it automatically parses like a, a JSON format and uh, with the response is true. Good. So now we said that we have like our content. Uh, so it parses it, we have a list. Okay, so how to make it like a data frame? We said for that we need like a from JSON function. And we said that the from JSON, it takes like a JSON string. So what we will do here is from this list, we are adding the content. If we run it, as I said, like that, we will get this error because we are not providing, here we are providing a list, not a JSON string. So what we will add here is like the text to make it readable by the from JSON function. So the, make it a text from a list, making a JSON like string. I don't know if it's okay. And let's run it. I don't know, I'm having this issue when it should run. Uh, yeah. Okay. Aaron responded on the comment on the chat. Yeah, I, I, I know. Let me check. After content. Uh, one moment. Let You're me... closing the parentheses in line 26. Yeah. Where are we? After oh, content, yeah, you yeah, have... yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, sorry. <laughs> No, uh, after uh, content, you are closing the, the parentheses there. 
Ah, okay. Yeah, yeah, you're right. It yeah. should be closed after text. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you move the last one too? Uh, actually, no, we, we oh, yeah, can't. Never mind, never mind. Yeah, it's okay. here. They just yeah. executed. Oh, yeah, sure. Just actually, executed, it should probably run. Yeah, 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 but it's good. This mistake, man, is really good. Why? Because here, what we are saying, we can't hear close, but we are, what we are saying here is like, we want the content to be a JSON string. So please, so here in content, we are making a list like a JSON string and you can uh, add this encoding, you know? So that's why we really, yeah, don't have like to close the parentheses here. So it was a good mistake, even for me, you know, it's like, logically it can't be, yeah, the parentheses can't be there. Okay. So we are getting the data we are interested in here. We have it like uh, we gave like a JSON, yeah, uh, we make a JSON string. Okay, and now for those like uh, who use like uh, Tidyverse or like want to make it a table, we can have like from this like a table. We have here the format, the vendor, the type, and description. Here we have the human transcriptome array, and then we have here the different arrays. For example, before I was uh, working with arise. So if I'm interested like in Orisa Sativa, here it's very easy. You only change this, you know, the species, you run everything again the same and you will get the results for the Orisa sativa. And here you have like all the information of all the microarray that are like of the rice here, Orisa sativa in ensemble. So it's quite very, very useful. And now if you're like a, a Taiji version of pipe addict like me, and uh, you want to, like to have sometimes from like uh, uh, to have a table so you can add as a table and then you get everything uh, in a, a table format and here i'm sure there is like one parenthesis or whatever here what it's uh, okay here what is saying like could not find function as table so when you have this kind of error it's really good so we need like to load the tidyverse. You know, for me, it's like uh, error messages are quite useful to understand the error I'm making. And here you will have all the information as table and you can have it in a CSV for, for you, okay? So now it's like one of the things, okay, you're a developer, you want to make a function, and uh, you know using all these like base url the endpoint the content type providing the content type so here it's like to in the document you will have function name and get micro race you provide here the base url the endpoint the content type that you like uh, per default it's like a json format content json and you have to add the stop for statues whenever there is like an error, like 400 client error, as I said, okay? Uh, is there any question now? So far, so good. Okay, let's move on. Okay, so let's say that we have a gene now. It's like, and we, have, we want to get the mouse homologous of the human, BRCA2 gene. So let's give like, uh, we have the gene here. We want to get like the homologous of the gene. So it's like you go to the ensemble, you check, you will get this like endpoint that you have to add. So homology, symbol, human, 
And then here you have to give the name of the gene. And here target species mouse. So you will make this request. You have your gene, you have your base URL, you have the, you know, the content type, you have your request, you run it. Okay. And then, so you will get your response. You will get the response, the result of your response. Let's check that. Okay. Okay, let's have a look at the results. You will get the results, result here. And you have lots of information. Here you will have the ortholog one. So there is you know, here like lots of information and then you have the ID. Let's say like, okay, I'm interested in like this result ID. I'm not interested in like the sequence. I'm only interested in this ID. So you go and you say, okay, I have the result. Then you have data where you got all this data. And then you will add here the ID. And you will get like pure homologous of the human BRCA2 gene. Okay. Now let's retrieve the CAC database. Actually, I've been using all this APA when I was uh, when I was retrieving the CAC API because I was interested in having like and seeing the all the pathways that are in the uh, like uh, database all the compounds and you know it's like making homology getting the hortologs and uh, yeah all these kind uh, i did it in python but uh, it's also possible to do it in r there is no you know it's like it's uh, easier yeah to do it like in r or python as well okay so for that, to get the information about the different endpoints, you go to the CAKE API and you will get, you know, it's like, for example, in this example, let's say we want to look uh, at the list of the human pathways in CAKE. So what you will do here, in the, because I saw, yeah, it's almost the time and I want to really to show this that you can get all the list of all like the human pathways in cake. So you will load, uh, yeah, it's like you will have from before this library loaded. And then you have your like base URL. Here you have the endpoint, the content type, it's the same. Everything here yeah, is the same as I explained. And what you want here, before like getting it in a table format is getting it as a text. Okay, so you go to text and you will get here all like the, the list of all the human pathway that are uh, in cake. Now, let's say you, you say, okay, I don't want it. You know, it's like, I want to get it as a data frame. So what you do is, or as a table here. So what you do is like, from here, you're getting it in a table format. Let me show you. Okay, you will get keg results, but here it's like you have a very long row with all the information. It's better, it's clear, but yeah, you're not, you're interested in having actually a table. Ah, sorry. Yeah, you're interested in having here like a, a table with this information, for example, the path name, uh, the path ID and the path name, okay? In like two different columns. So what you do is using the tidyverse separate function. 
And what you do is having the separate. So you have here a separator and you will have, you call this like a CAC IG uh, uh, or pathway number and pathway name. And whenever you go there, you will get this kind of results and you will get what you're interested in. You can have a CSV from here and then you can you retrieve, you know, you get the information. Okay, let's say you're interested in the glycolysis pathway. So you know that the pathway number is this one. Okay, good. Now, as I said, you can like retrieve the amino acid sequence as a FASTA format. What you have to do here is only instead of write text, you add, like uh, you give information about FASTA. And the way you do it is this way. So in KEG, you will get lots of information. And here you have like, uh, you say, let's retrieve the amino acid sequence of a human gene. i sorry, it's here. Okay, the only thing you have to do is like he, giving you know it's like the sequence and here you change instead of content type takes day you add like FASTA and you'll get you know it's like your sequence in a FASTA format okay if you want for example to get like information about like a, um yeah about like a pathway or like you want to get like the xml like format what you have to only do is getting changing the content type instead of actually here it's only it's a sequence so you will get it only in a faster format but if you are interested in a specific pathway what you you will do here is like instead of like having like a, a faster or text is xml and you will get you know all the information you are interested in okay Good. So I don't know. It's like uh, if you want to have more information. So I saw yesterday when preparing, yeah, like uh, this material that there is a HTTR2 now library. And uh, instead of like having all the time, like uh, making a request, you can use uh, this HTTR2 uh, library. So what you will do? is uh, first loading the library. And then let's say you are, now we are changing the API and we will use the 23andMe API. And let's say I'm interested in a list of accession available on the 23andMe platform. What you will do is like, as we said, it's like all, every request start with an URL. So it's like here, you will have your URL you're making your request. So with um, this like, uh, I didn't upload the library. Good, okay. So here the HTTR2 like um, uh, output is quite different, you know, and you will get is also the information you will get from your request, as you see, is a little bit also different, okay? So here you will get the body and it says empty body. And then what you can see, it's like, okay, you, you say, uh, I want to see the dry run, you know, it's like what has been sent to the server, okay? So what you do is like request, and dry run here, you will use this function and you can have uh, an idea about that. And the uh, HTTR2 is really good because for pipe users as me, it's like, I really like pipes. So you will get everything. Yeah, it's like using the Tidyverse, okay? And then, so it's like to make it uh, uh, easier for you and uh, so then let's say I want to get the response, you know, from this request. I don't know, are you following me? Is it okay? Am I going too fast? Because now it's like... Uh... Is it okay or am I going too fast? It's okay. 
Okay, thank you. So now, yeah, what uh, you are doing is like, okay, I want to get the request. Uh, um, I want to get, you know, it's like um, make a request and get a response. Okay, so for that, you will be uh, using uh, rec perform, you know, and you will get your response here. So let's see this response. And you will see it's almost the same as the one we saw with HGTR. So it's like status, okay, content type, JSON, body, and you know, it doesn't give you the body here. So it's like to get the body and to get like the body of your response, you have to run response body JSON. Okay. I don't know why it's good and here and you will get the same like output as with the HTTR. Okay. Is there any other question? So now let's say you're not like an R user or you're an R user but really you don't, you don't want to bother yourself with all these like content with all these functions, okay? So I will share my other screen and show you that there's a way for lazy people, <laughs> like I'm a lazy also person. So um, let's say here, Actually, I, I think I shared my browser, but not my. Uh, say desktop one here. Yeah. Okay. Okay, for lazy people. Okay, let's say because uh, when you go to like an API, uh, I think let's see open AI API. You get here, uh, you go to the API. I think everyone was. And here you go to read the documentation. Everyone was like uh, talking about ch chat GPT, whatever API. Okay, so you go here and you go to create completion. And what this doing, say this is a test you know so what you're making here is an example of a request are you seeing my screen or not let me see it. yeah so you're making here like a request but using curl so what you want like okay you say oh i'm not interested in like uh, knowing r or i'm really like a lazy a lazy person and what you can do is here, you can convert this, this curve, you know, you have here curve example, let's say to R, and you get here all the information, you know, it's like require HGR, all what you needed to, you know, it's like make a request, using the OpenAI uh, API. There is also this also resource. It's like you have another way of doing it. I go down, down, down. And it's the this one also. Ah, I used it actually. The other one, down, 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 down. So you will have everything here. You put your example here and same, you will get your R code. Is there any other question? So here you have like, uh, you get all the like, uh, 
code you you need you know it's like to get the information and to make the request of this one it's like this kind of request or you can directly act, ask uh, chat gpt to give you the code instead of using the website <laughs> yeah actually you can do that what i did yesterday and uh, i'm not showing it is uh, getting a token and from R making a request to complete because there's also code complete or improve code and get, you know, it's like the response in R. So it's like you don't have even to go to it's like chat GPT. No need using the, the open AI API. You have, I didn't show it because you need the token and, you know, it takes some time and I didn't want to show the token. Yeah, but you can uh, get the token because here you have to provide your API key, you know, and whenever you know how to do that. So whenever you get your token, because here you have yeah to generate your token, so you can ask, uh, yeah, it's like uh, the API, okay, uh, can you opt optimize my code and you'll get the response like this one, you know, you can get copied and, you know, keep like working everything without moving yeah, from our studio, from your R console. Cool. Awesome. Thank you, Eddie.